Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. Today's video we're going to be covering some more central limit theorem. Um, in this problem we're going to see we have a situation with a normal distribution. But let's begin with the problem first and then we'll get into the details. Suppose the amount of a popular sports drink in bottles leaving the filling machine has a normal distribution with a mean of 101.5 milliliters and a standard deviation of 1.6 milliliters. If 16 bottles are randomly selected, find the, prob the probability that the mean content is A, less than 100.9 milliliters, B, more than 102.1 milliliters, and C, between 100.9 milliliters and 102.1 milliliters. Now, before we begin anything on this problem, we have to check a few things for central limit theorem. For one, we already know this has a normal distribution. And so because it has a normal distribution, no matter what sample size we have, we can apply the central limit theorem to it, where n just becomes the n, and our central limit theorem formula will be z equals x minus mu of x bar over our standard error, where our standard error formula is sigma over the square root of n. Besides this, we know the details they give us. We have our mean, we have our standard deviation, and we have our sample size. And here we have a mean of 101.5 milliliters. We have a standard deviation of 1.6 milliliters. And if you notice, I'm using population terms here because this is coming from a filling machine. It doesn't come from a sample itself. It's coming from something that we're supposing to know. And because we're supposing to know it, our sigma is known, and we're using the known sigma formula, right? And besides that, we have our sample size, which is 16 bottles. Now that we have all three of these, we can determine what our mu x bar is, and we can determine our standard error. So we should get those out of the way before we get into any real works, right? So let's start off with our mu of x bar, our, mu, our mean of the sampling distribution. This is exactly what the mean is already. This doesn't change at all. Anytime you see one of these problems, don't be too intimidated by this mu of x bar because it's exactly what the, the mu is, the mean. And so here we have 101.5. Secondly, we're looking for our standard error, right? And now in this case, our standard error is going to be the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And our standard deviation is 1.6. And we're dividing this by the square root of 16, which this becomes 4. And 4 goes into 1.6, 0 0.4 times. And this is our standard error. So now we can begin solving A, B, and C here. Let's start with A. All right? So to do the problem for A, we have, we're going to change this. We're going to translate this into a probability term. So we're going to put here the P. And it says less than, right? So the sample is X is less than 100.9 milliliters. And this is a z-score. So we're just going to write the z down here. And we're going to put the formula for the z-score by inserting all our variables. And we have the mu of x bar here. It's just 101.5. We have the standard error right here. It's 0 0.4. And we know our sample is 100.9. So we're going to set this up 100.9 minus the mean divided by the standard error. And this is going to give us our z-score, which we're going to translate into here. And this up top gives us negative 0 0.6. On the bottom here, we get 0 0.4. And when we divide this, we get negative 1.50. Remember, whenever you're calculating a z-score, you have to calculate this to at least two decimal places. If it goes to three decimals, use the third to round the second. Get a two-digit number. So now we have our z-score, which is negative 1.50. Now, when calculating this, we need to use a z-score chart. All right? So let's begin by first graphing this on the bell-shaped curve, right? So here we're going to have our z-scores go from left to right. The middle center of this is always at 0, right? And our z-score is negative 1.5. All negative scores are on the left. All positive are on the right. So our z-score is over here somewhere, negative 1.50. And the area to the left of this curve is the probability that this is less than. So everything on the left side of this line indicates the left z-score. 
And that's what our graph looks like here, right? So the area is everything to the left of this marker, and what we have to do then is find the area on the z-score chart. And from our z-score chart, we can see that our area for the solution then, for this component here, is 0.0668, which is the area for the z-score, the left of the z-score of negative 1.5. So this area will be the answer for being less than 100.9 milliliters. So the solution here is 0 0.0668. I'm going to wipe down this area now because I need it to continue with the next pieces of the problem, right? So going on to problem B, part B then says, uh, what's the probability that we have more than 102.1 milliliters? So for part B, we again set this up and translate it into the problem type. So the probability that the sample more than means greater than, so we're going to put the greater than symbol here, right, 102.1 milliliters. And again, we're going to try to convert this non-standard term into a standardized term for the z-score. And so we're going to create this into a z-score formula where the sample is 102.1 milliliters. Right, and we're going to subtract the mean, which is 101.5, and divide it by the standard error, again, so we're using the central limit theorem formula. So we have 0 0.4 up here. And this time, what's going to happen is we're going to take the difference, which gives us 0 0.6, and we're dividing it by the standard error again, which is 0 0.4. And one more time, we're going to divide this and round it to two decimal places, right? So we're going to get 1.50. And now our task is then to convert this non-standard value to a standard one, and we get the P of Z greater than 1.50. And now we would have to find the z-score, the area that corresponds to the z-score. So let's first draw the diagram to see what the area looks like and the shape of this graph. So we draw a bell curve. We know that right in the middle of this bell curve is when the z-score is 0. And we have a z-score of 1.5. Again, we have 1.50 here, and we're shading to the right. That the directional arrow tells you which way to shade, and this is our shaded area. All right? This is actually going to probably be a little bit closer to the center because 1 takes up a lot of this. 1.5 should be somewhere around here. So this graph looks very similar to the other one because the last one was negative 1.5, and this one is now positive 1.5. So there's some metric about the z's on both sides, right? And now we'll just have to go and calculate the area using a z-score chart. So actually, to get the area of a right tail z-score, we have to first get the area to the left of this z-score and subtract it from 1, because the area of the entire curve is 100%. And so if this entire thing is 100%, which is just 1.000. If we want to get the area to a right of a marker, we can cut the area to the left of that marker and just stay with the area to the right, which is what we need to do to this. So we're going to take 1 and subtract the area to the left of 1.50. And this should give us the area to the right of it, the same way a cookie is cut, right? All right. So after calculating our z-score, we see that the area to the left of 1.50 is 0 0.9332. And the difference between 1 and 0 0.9332 is also 0 0.0668. And so this is the same answer as what we had before. And the reason for it is pretty basic. Um, when we take a look closely at what the previous problem was and what it showed, we see that the area of the last one was a z-score that corresponded to the left of the z-score of negative 1.50. Well, the second one gave us a z-score that corresponded to the right of the area of 1.50 also. And this area corresponds directly to this area as they're symmetric about the z -ax uh, this z-axis, right? And so whatever's happening below negative 1.50 is happening above 1.50 because at the center of them you have the zero, and they're symmetric. Right? And this leads us to our next problem also, because they're all like conjuncted together, sort of. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave this diagram as we have the solution for problem B here. And we're going to get into problem C, because in problem C, 
what we actually have is the error between 100.9 milliliters and 100.2 milliliters, 102.1 milliliters. So to get the error between the two, we have here the error between 100.9, we're going to set up the probability as 100.9 milliliters, and the sample is less than 102.1 milliliters. And since we did both of these already, what we're looking at is the error between these two markers. And since we know the z-scores, we can go ahead and translate these into the z-scores that give us these areas already that we just solved. So the first z-score we had was negative 1.50. And that's less than Z now, which is a standardized score, and 1.50. And here we have the same chart. And what we did was we discovered the areas that were outside the lines, not inside the lines, because we're looking for the area between the two lines. And here we had an area of 0 0.0668. And here we had another area of 0 0.0668. As we recall, they were both symmetric about the Z axis, so they actually could pertain to the same areas to each side. Now remember, the whole z-score chart represents 100%. So when we're looking for the area between the two curves, right, and we're looking between negative 1.50 and 1.50, what this actually represents is this middle area. Now if all of this represents 100%, we have 1, and we're subtracting an area, right? And the areas we're subtracting are these two. So we're subtracting 0 0.0668. And we're also subtracting this twice, so we're just going to notarize this twice. And to get the area between the two curves, then we just take the difference of the two. So when we subtract from one these two markers, we can just double that, right? Or we could just put them together. We have negative 0.13, uh, 0 0.13 and 6. And when we get the result for this, our area between the two, becomes 0 0.8664. And this becomes the solution for this. Now, it's not always this easy to get these answers. As you see, we have three components to this problem to make this last step easier. Usually, this isn't necessarily ran this way. However, if you did have the tail ends of this, it makes this third problem a lot easier. Let's say you didn't have those two components and you had to build this one for yourself. Let me show you the way that you would build it based on these up here. And I don't have to really wash these away to show you what we would get because these two would actually still be the same. So I'll take you guys just a few steps back. And what I will do is I'll leave this z-score because this pertains to the left hand of 150.5. And I'll also remind you guys what the area to the left of negative 150.5 was. So again, when you have a z-score like this and you're given an area between two z-score marks, two, uh, two non-standard marks of 100.9 milliliters and 100.2, uh, 102.1, we separate this into two samples. So this becomes x is less than 102.1, and we're subtracting from the right one, the left one. So we have the probability that the sample is less than 100.9. And now here we know that to convert this to a z-score, we did this already in part, I believe it was part B. We got the z-score for the left of 150. And for the right one, we had negative 150, negative 1.5. So this translated into this. Even though for part A it was the area, uh, part B was the area to the right, we eventually found the area to the left of 1.5 as 0.9332. And to this, we're subtracting the area to the left of 100.9, which became the z-score of z being less than negative 1.50. And so this area, again, to the left of negative 1.5 is actually 0 0.0668. And when we subtract this from this one, we still get the same answer of 8, 0 0.8664, which is the area between 100.9 milliliters and 102.1 milliliters. Now, here's a little bonus footage for this last problem, because the last thing that we forgot to add to this problem was the actual drawing of how to do it when you're cutting out the two components against each other. Now, we have the two z-scores, as we remember here. And one z-score is higher than the other z-score. 
So here we're looking at two z squares where we're cutting from the larger area, the smaller area. So we're going to start with the area from the left side here. The z square going to the left of 1.5 begins over here because this is 0 for the z mark. And 1.5 is over here somewhere. And we're going to the left of the z mark, all right? And so what we're doing is we're adding all of this into the graph. And this is the area to the left of 1.5. To get the area between these two curves, because our next area is going to be negative 1.5, and we're subtracting the area below this marker. And so when we make the marker for negative 1.5, which is over here somewhere, we're basically going to cut everything. And I'm going to erase it to show how we're cutting it up, because we're no longer going to have this value here. And whatever value was below negative 1.5, which was actually just 0 0.0668, this area is going to be cut away from the 0.9332. And what's left over is just 0.8664. So this mid area here, this entire region, is 0.8664. Thank you.